right, guys. I, I, I've been thinking about this a lot for the past couple of days as we start training camp and, and all the possibilities of what Inter Miami did at the, at the last part of the 2022 season. And a lot of it, for however much they were very deep in the position, they did it without a lot of wing play. We saw at the start of, of the 2022 season that a lot of it was to go out wide and try and get those in-swinging balls. And, and, and Phil Neville has constructed a roster here that I wanted to get into that has a ton of depth at that winger spot, and yet when I look at what the starting 11 might be heading into the season or the, or the, the first starting 11, I wonder how much wide play, wing play, will, will play a role in it. I think about that too with the now introduction of Franco Negri on the left side as a left wing back perhaps, and DeAndre Yedlin as a right wing back playing those wide channels and, and thinking about what that means for some of the wingers. So th- there is a very deep bench here as we go through with Emerson, with Robert Taylor, with Robbie Robinson, Ariel Lassiter, the recently signed uh, Nicholas Stefanelli, Coco Jean, who we're still waiting to see, and Jake LaCava, who they got in the trade for Indiana Vasilev on the expansion draft. So with all that in mind, let's just start with, with the unit as a whole and, and wonder what is the role of the winger in Phil Neville's 2023 iteration of Inter-Miami? a really good question because where my mind is if you had listened to the pod that we just recorded um i'm looking for a back three i'm looking for a three four one two in specific and as you were saying ian there's possible there's a possibility these guys don't even start on day one any of them like i i think that that is a huge possibility so the role for me for these guys depending on what happens and i guess in my mind right now and how i see the the roster really fitting to the best players on the pitch given the signings that are supposedly and allegedly coming in it's late in games go ahead and find yourself any type of production to get a goal because if they're not going to get out in front you need the speed or you need the technical ability of someone like robert taylor or the speed of a lasser to come on and, and get at opposition defenses in ways that you weren't doing before so that for me is the role that i'm looking at for a lot of these guys uh, Lasseter is one of them in specific because we know the speed that he carries. Uh, Emerson is honestly, in my opinion, just to get some more minutes. Robert Taylor, I want to see in a, a, a different, you know, different combined roles. But as a winger, I think that he he helps cut in and, and create plays as well if they're struggling there. Um, Robbie, again, is another one of those go at the defense, get a one on one, try and beat a man to the box. So there's so many different ways that a lot of these guys can contribute. But a lot of it for me, for most of them anyway, is going to be off the bench trying to gain or salvage a point or two points in, in that and trying to get a win for, for Inter Miami throughout the year. Yeah, I was just looking at the roster and jotting them um, all of the wingers down. I think a lot of these uh, players have, um, they can play in multiple positions. So Stefanelli, um, he can play as a, a center forward or an attacking midfielder, Lasseter. We've seen him play as a striker. Uh, Emerson, I'm a little worried about. I don't know if he can play in, as a central midfielder or attacking midfielder. I don't know uh, yet. Uh, Taylor, he can play in central midfield. Robinson as a, um, a, a center striker. Uh, Coco Jean as a, a striker as well. And LaCava can play as a striker. So all of these these wingers that uh, we're categorizing, a lot of them can play in, in different positions. The only one that I, I'd say is a pure out and out winger, you know, get to the byline, you know, get people one on one is Emerson, you know, the who doesn't probably doesn't have a secondary position. So I, I get the concerns about, you know, where the winger is going to play. I think with the amount of uh, games that Inter Miami will play and um, the depth, the depth that they're now stacking up, I think that uh, all these guys will get time in different formations and different systems. Uh, it just depends uh, how Phil Neville uses them, really. I don't think they'll go, you know, these, some of them are out and out wingers, but all of them do have secondary positions that Neville will probably use depending on the the team that they're playing against, the competition. So I, I just think everything will remain flexible. Phil did say in his opening press conference, I think that, that they could play as much as 49 games this year in terms of League's Cup, US Open Cup, the league schedule, and everything. So, you know, bench is going to be a, a huge factor. But I look at a guy right off the bat like Robert Taylor, who technically is so gifted, and we saw it at times, especially in the box, when he's making those magical, uh, as Ray Hudson would say, magisterial plays in the box, and is able to, to dance his way through. Where, if it's not on the wing, are we putting him? I, I, I remember back in, in, in the real latter part of last year, 
when it was almost like a 4-3-1-2 that they were playing with Robert Taylor and Indiana Vasilev protecting right uh, next to John Mozart, Gregory, whoever it was. Uh, that would seem to be a, a natural fit for him, but it didn't allow that technical brilliance that we've seen when he's able to get forward. So where do you find that balance of where he can actually slide in to get him on the field? Because getting him on the field is good because he can be a game changer with, you know, one run at a defense while also playing into the role of getting him as advanced. I, I look back at the middle part of the season last year with him and Yedlin on that right flank and how just lethal it was. How can you get a situation where you, you can really – weaponize a player like that that can move in and out like that and is so technically strong and yet perhaps right now is is not finding positionally in the best spots on the field um i don't know honestly we i don't know it just like i said it really just depends i don't think miami will play a a set formation i i think it's just based off of what team they play or or the competition, you know, I don't think it'll be, you know, a 4-3-3 all throughout the year. I think they'll play with, um, uh, you know, two strikers up top, maybe one, depending. I, I don't, it, yeah, it's just, I think it'll be fluid. Some games will play a 4-3-3, some 4-2-3-1, just depends at, uh, again, against the team. So, um, yeah, it's it's difficult to say right now, but um, there will definitely be times where Robert Taylor will play as a right winger. Uh, you know, let's say against um, I don't know any team that plays a, a four two three one. You know, they can play four three three. Have numbers in the middle, wingers. You know, all that good stuff. So, yeah, I just I think the team just wants to remain flexible and and see where the season takes them before they they sit down and have a set formation. I'm trying to think of like when I go back to those Robert Taylor performances when he was on the right side. I remember there was one game Ian, you and I like specifically discussed it in the press box that that combination between him and Yedlin was, was so, so good. But that's also the same time that we were talking about that there was such an imbalance in the inter Miami attack. So with the addition of, of somebody like Negri, I think the question is not really, how do you find, fit for Robert Taylor in in this in this situation that Miami's in in terms of positionally and and getting him to a starting 11 it's if you do do that how do you balance it and who do you play on the left side to combine with Negri as well because I don't think you're only going to you're not going to get that on just one side I think that we've seen it work I think that Yedlin can combine with a lot of these guys that are on the roster right now it's now finding a way to have Negri if you are going to go to that type of positional advantage against opposition to go to the wide play and the combination play of overlapping runs and things like that. It's who do you plug in on the left side that we didn't really see. We didn't see Laster and McVay combined. Go look at all the passing matrixes on MLS website and all the statisticals that you can see on their website through all, all, all the inter Miami games. I mean, it was completely lopsided and you saw this huge gap between McVay and Lassiter versus anybody who was next to Yedlin was about this much. And then you look at the other side and it was about this much. So, it's now finding out if Negri is the guy can, that can combine with somebody like Robert Taylor, who has played on the left. I think, if I'm not mistaken, he played on the left and did really well in that July 4th game against FC Dallas, where uh, he was going up and down the byline, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's it's just finding the balance on both sides rather than just where do you fit it in. Because if it is to fit in, Phil Neville will put it in. I think it's 100% he's going to deploy that. It's doing it on the opposite side in order to have a balance within the attack. Lastly, guys, if there was a knock on this group, it really comes down to finishing. Uh, we look at, you know, Ariel Lasseter talked about it in his opening press conference. Robbie Robinson has, has suffered from from finishing woes. Emerson as well has, has been able to, to really speed past people um, but not have that that final third, uh, you know, clinical finish. I, I know that the, the group is aware of it as a whole. How do you work on that? Because Ariel Lasseter, when he was talking to us earlier this week, his, his response was, I know now that I can get past the defense with my speed. And what I'm working on right now is when I get past them, slowing down and making sure that I'm able to slow myself down to compose it to be able to do that finishing. And I wonder when it comes to so many of these guys who are going to be fighting for minutes, how much that finishing effort, how much that finishing touch, that finishing skill is going to be the, the make or break for either of them, for any of them. If you can finish, then, then you're the guy. If you can't, next guy up. And Austin, I just wonder, like, 
who who has who do you have the most confidence in their ability to understand that, be working towards that, and actually accomplish it? I do think that is Lassiter. Um, and maybe that's just because I have the gritty stuck in my head from last year a couple times, but that's about, that's about it. I mean, I, I've not really seen much from, from Robbie Robinson in terms of finishing on that aspect, beating a guy one-on-one -on -one, and the question is always, okay, and then what? Because what, where does Robbie find success after beating a guy one-on-one? -on -one? Because we know he can do it and it might not be with the most versatile skill set, but he gets it done because he is just, he's just able to. But of all the other guys listed that I'm looking at right now, haven't seen Emerson do it. Robert Taylor, I look to more as a creator than ra rather than a shooter. Robbie, I just spoke about. Sp Stefanelli, Alex, you can allude to that uh, in, in a second. Lasseter is the one that has gotten goals on the, on the score sheet. And Coco, I haven't really seen play. So throughout the entire list, the only one with some sort of a track record in terms of, in terms of finishing is Ariel Lasseter. And I think that if he actually took the time to improve on this and work on it. And it was a, it was a, a, a focal point in his off season. And up until the, the beginning of the MLS season, a hundred percent, he would be the one that I have the most faith in. Yeah, I think um, uh, to your Stefanelli point, Stefanelli is one who likes to combine. So similar to, well, actually not similar to Robert Taylor. He likes to play one twos off. That's why I think he'll excel uh, playing maybe as a withdrawn forward or maybe coming in, cutting in on the left-hand side and combining with the attacking midfielder and, and uh, the overlapping fullback. He's not a pure out-and-out -out winger in that sense. He loves to cut in and, and, and you know, score and be in and around the penalty box, and he's a real poacher in that sense. So he's not a pure uh, winger. Um, but, yeah, to your point, Austin, I think Lasseter is probably the only one who has shown that he can do that consistently. And um, so, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think uh, it personally, I, I don't know. I, yeah, Lasseter is the only one who has shown he's able to do it consistently, but uh, Robert Taylor is more that creator. But like I said, I don't think Miami will be stuck in one formation this season. They'll play multiple and, and, and you know, with two strikers up top, you know, Martinez, Campana, and, you know, I think they'll probably stick with that that diamond in the midfield more so than than not, or maybe even go to a back three. So, um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, Stefanelli, he's definitely more a central forward, attacking midfielder, combining type of guy than a pure out-and-out winger. There's definitely options in this group, and I think that that is the key to it. That's what Phil has addressed time and time again, saying that, that you can never have enough bodies, especially when it comes to these wingers. He likes the depth there. He likes the ability, like you said, e Alex, each one of them provides something a little bit different. And I think that that's really where the strength of this team comes. When you look at a game, Phil definitely has a, a you know, really a buffet of options for him to go to late in the game or, or like you said, mix and match throughout the year. Thank you guys for a wonderful discussion. It is only week one of the preseason. These are the wonderful conversations that we're hoping to have throughout the year and in addition to the pod. And you can find all this and our new articles on our new Substack. Go to theheronoutlet.substack.com. Make sure you subscribe and get videos like this. You can get wonderful scouting reports. We have them up on Nicholas Stefanelli. Alex did a great job on that. And Franco Negri, the brand new signings for Inter Miami. We'll have a ton of news from around training camp coming up this year. And make sure you follow Alex, Austin, Andres, myself on Twitter, on Instagram, at the Heron Outlet. And we'll see you back here soon.